Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to go through an exciting evolution in Microsoft Excel through the announcement of Python and Excel. Python and Excel combines the best of both Python and Excel analytics into one without any setup required. And with all that said, let's head on into the video. Here in Excel, we have a table called Project Forecast that we'll be using Python on. Python in Excel is used in three steps. The first step is entering into Python mode. The second step is entering the Python code. And the third step is to display the results. So for example, I'm going to go into this cell here and I'm going to type the equal sign and then I'm going to type in PY and then tab to enter into Python mode. We know that we're in Python mode because there's a green block with the letters PY within it and we can see an icon appear to the right of this check mark. Alternatively, we can use the keyboard shortcut Control alt shift p to enter into Python mode as well. Now that we're in Python mode, let's do a simple calculation such as 5 plus 5. And this is where it starts to differ a little bit between Python and Excel. In Excel, when you're finished writing a formula, you can press the Enter key to enter in that formula. But in Python, pressing the Enter key will just send you to the next line. So if you actually want to commit to a piece of code, you need to press Control and Enter at the same time. And now we can see the result of 10 is returned to us. Now that we know how to work with Python and Excel, let's go ahead and run Python against our Excel table. Python by itself doesn't come with objects that represent tables, unlike Excel with its structured Excel tables. This is where the pandas library comes in. The pandas library was created to extend Python's functionality so that Python can work with tables like this one. Outside of Excel, to use the pandas library, you'd have to import the library first, but luckily for us, the pandas library is automatically loaded for us to use. To use Python on the data in this Excel table, we first need to import the table into pandas data frame object. So I'm going to go back into the Python code and delete what's currently there. Here, I'll create a variable called pf for project forecast and assign it to the values in the Excel table, which is as easy as selecting the table itself. So I'm just going to hover this piece over here on this cell until this arrow turns into, into a diagonal arrow. Then I'm going to left click to select the contents. Then I'm going to left click again to select the entire table. And we can see that the formula is changing so it's selecting all of the columns in my project forecast table, and I'm going to be including the headers. So now I'll commit to the code by pressing Control and Enter, and we can see that the result looks identical to our Excel table. By default, the result is shown as Excel values, meaning values show on the worksheet, but we can collapse it into a single cell, and I'll show you how. In the cell here, where the formula currently sits, I right click here, and I click Python output, and by default it's selecting Excel value, but if I click Python object, then it gets collapsed into a single cell, and it's just called data frame. Now that we've established a data frame, let's start doing some quick analysis of our data. For example, in this cell here, I'm gonna enter into Python mode, and then I'm gonna reference the data frame that we just created, then I'll type period, and then use the method describe. Then I'm going to commit to this code, control enter, and now we're given some quick stats on our data. So some things to note here are for project red, the minimum monthly forecasted cost is 111,000 and the maximum monthly forecast for project midnights is 120,000. We can also see things like the average or the mean of our forecast. So for project red, the average forecasted cost is $139,000, which we can verify by highlighting the project red column here. And we can see that the average is indeed $139,000. Now, I know some of you may be thinking that this is stuff that can be done using existing formulas. And you know what? You'd be right. We can do other comparable calculations too. For example, I'm going to go back into our Python code and delete what's currently there. And instead of that, I'm going to reference our data frame again, then I'm going to use the sum method, and then let's see what happens. So control enter, and now we've summed our monthly forecast by project, and we can verify this as well. So if we highlight all the values in the midnights column, we can see that the 
total forecast cost is $5 million. Where things start to get interesting is when it comes to doing transformations. And let me show you what I mean. For example, let's say that I want to summarize the forecast by quarter. Normally this would be done using a pivot table, but it can be done faster with Python. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So in our Python code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called grouping. And here I'm going to access the pandas library and I'm going to use the method grouper. So here I want to group by our date column where the frequency is equal to quarter. Then I'm just going to press the enter key to go to the next line. And then I'm going to reference our data frame. And then I'm going to use the method group by. And I want to group by whatever was in our grouping. And what I want to do with it is sum all the values. So let's hit control enter. And now we've produced quarterly forecast costs for our projects. So let's do some quick sanity checks here. For the last quarter in 2024, Project Midnight's has a forecast of $291,000. So to verify this, I just have to highlight these cells down here. I see $291,000. And what's really cool about this is if I was to change any values in my data set, so if I change this from $120,000 to $150,000, my calculation is updated automatically. Another cool transformation that you can do using Python is unpivoting columns. And what this does is it completely bypasses the need for Power Query, which would have been the alternative to doing this. So for example, I'm going to go back into the Python code and delete what's currently there. Here I'm going to create a variable called unpivot. And I'm going to use the pandas library, and I'm going to use the method called melt. So here I'm going to reference our data frame, and then I'm going to assign the identifier variable. So this is typed out as id underscore vars equal to the date column. And what this means is that I want the date column to remain pivoted and unpivot the rest. So when I commit to this, what we'll see is the date column staying the same. And then we have a variable column and a value column. Now, if I was to apply a filter to this result, what I would see is that under the variable column, we have both midnights and red. And then the value column is just the forecasted cost. And just like the previous data frame, the results of this code are displayed as Excel values by default, but I can change that output so that it appears as a Python object by clicking that option there. Now, when we talk about data visualization, there is an incredible amount of ways that you can visualize data using Python. For example, let's say that I wanted to show a simple line chart based on our first data frame. So what I can do is go to this cell here, enter Python mode, and I'm just gonna reference that first data frame. So PF and then dot plot, where I just want the X axis to be our date column. So let's commit to that. And then we see a really tiny small graph appear in the cell. And what we can do from here is right click and then go to picture in cell and then click create reference. And now we can see a really neat chart right away of our data. And again, if we were to change the value in our data set, so let's change this back to $120,000. Our chart will automatically update. When it comes to creating more complex charts, there are two libraries that can be used, which are matplotlib and seaborn. On the matplotlib website, I found a good visual to base the data on, and I used ChatGPT to help me build onto that code to make it work with this example. So I'm going to go back into the Python code, and then I'm going to replace this code with the code that was produced by ChatGPT. Now it looks like a lot at first, but I basically wanted one graph that added both project costs together and then created two subplots beneath it 
that separated out each project's forecasted costs. So from here, let's go ahead and commit to the code, but first we'll shrink this formula bar and then commit to our code. And now we have a beautiful graph that has one graph that adds both project costs together and then two subplots that separate each project into their own individual graph. And just like with all our other examples, if I was to change one of the values, such as this one to $200,000, we can see our graphs immediately change. And that's how Python and Excel works. It's most definitely an exciting time to be an Excel user as well as a Python user too. And I can't wait to explore all the other use cases for this feature. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.